All right, so let's talk about the container. Why did I put it in the ground? What was the reason for that? Well, for me, I knew when I first got here, I wasn't going to have a lot to deal with at first. I didn't have a lot of structures in place, just a shed, basically this container, and I had a trailer. So my main reason for burying it was to have consistent temperature for my food storage. That was the main reason for burying this. Now, with the research I did, I knew I couldn't bury the top unless I put some kind of a heavy structure over it. But I knew if I at least got the sides of it done, I could use the back of it for my food storage. So that's exactly why I put this in the ground like I did in the first place. Now, a couple things to think about. I did tilt this forward just a tiny bit. There's holes in the front of this, so if there's any runoff, we left a gap under there that it could come out. And I have seen it come through here before with really heavy rains. Number two is I took like some tar and I tarred the whole top of this, the side of it, and then we bought a big enough tarp that would go over the whole thing, folded it in half, and tarped it. Then the very next thing I did, this thing was full of my stuff too, so I had to empty it out on a good day. Got in here and framed a wall at the back section of this, so basically just put a bulkhead in here. I insulated all these walls, got an insulated door, so that way the whole back of this container was insulated off on itself and it's eight by eight is what it's become. Now I really necessarily didn't have anything planned for the front of it, but what it became is just a shop for me. So what I did is I ended up putting walls in here. Um, I haven't finished the ceiling quite yet, but I've made my shop in here basically to house all my tools, my saws and all that. So this is the insulated wall I showed you earlier with the insulated door. I know the door's dirty, so give me a bad time. I need to wash that. <laughs> but this is where I keep all my food storage here in the back. And it does work very well. I haven't had any issues with this the whole time I've been here. And, uh, but the shop has turned out great. It's nice to have all that done and the convenience of that also. So as you've seen before, it's basically back in this little hill section this was a hill all we did was dig it out and basically put that up in there the road comes around this and this is where a lot of the water runoff comes around it you can see the tarp that's on there as we put the dirt back in there it kind of got moved and it almost looks like it's wrinkled there like the side of the containers wrinkled but it's not and you can see we didn't bury any of the top this is just leaves and stuff that are on here but most of it's buried most of this container is buried now the sides of these walls of these containers are pleated. And that's really pretty darn strong. You can't imagine how strong that is. But the pleated sides will hold up just fine under all this pressure. For all this time, I haven't had any issues with that. Now you can see here where I've double tarped this. The, the first section has already ripped. And that's the, that's the issue. I wouldn't suggest to put a tarp over it. I don't know why we thought about that. It was just another thing of protection we thought of, but with all the pressure and the weight of this and the soil sinking around it, obviously this is gonna rip. The second section's gonna rip at some point too. Um, I will cut this off at some point and take this off of here, but what I will do eventually in the future is build either a deck here or at least a roof over this to keep as much water off this thing as I can. If you would like, you could probably put some rock on the sides of these. That would help it drain down to the bottom and out if you wanted to do it that way. There's going to be all kinds of ways to do it, but the main thing is where are you putting it in your property? How is your runoff coming off your property? That's going to be your main thing because I did tilt this just a tiny bit, like I said. And then there's those two holes right there. So there's a full gap going underneath this with a little bit of rock below that. I didn't want that rock touching the board. I wanted a gap there. So if any water at all came through here, it would come out. Now the front of this is tilted towards me and to the left a little bit because all of the runoff you have to be thinking always when you're putting something in the ground, where is the runoff coming? A lot of people forget that. And if you have a flat piece of property, you're not gonna bury one of these because it's just gonna become a swimming pool down there. <laughs> so think about this. The only reason the rocks are there is just to hold this away so we have a nice landing to get in there. 
Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. As always, I wanted to talk a little bit about the container. It's probably the one thing on this yard that has probably brought in more people to my channel than anything is that container. Because <laughs> they see it and they think, oh, wow, that's cool. It's buried in the ground. And I get that a lot. That's just cool. I, I always wanted to do that. So uh, just some things to think about. Definitely protect the outside of it the best you can. Like I said, I put that tar on it. I wouldn't put any tarps on it. That makes no sense to me at this point now. <laughs> I might have put some more drainage rock around the sides maybe and in the, in the back. Um, but other than that, it's really worked great. I haven't had any issues of any areas rusting through or anything like that. And as you can hear, it's, it's dumping on me again. I should get five inches of rain in the next three days. I get a lot of rain here. I, I get very little snow. I might get a skiff here and there through the winter, but that's it. So it's mainly all rain here. And when I get rain here, it rains like crazy. So with that being said, I don't really have any issues with the runoff or the water coming around it. Truly think about where you're going to put it in your yard. And if you're thinking about doing something like that, give it a year. Go out there and watch it. Watch where your runoff is coming. Watch where it's going. Um, and then try to make a decision of where to put it. Where's the least area where the runoff comes around? Is there a mound already on your property that you can put it in? Because you're not going to want to just put it somewhere and stuff dirt to the side of it. It's just not the thing to do. One thing I've learned here on this property is work with my land, not against it. And if you'll work with the contours of your land instead of working against them, uh, nature will treat you much better. <laughs> anyway, I hope that I hope that clarifies some things. If you guys have any more questions on the container, let me know. Uh, I'd be glad to answer anything I can. So, hope you guys are having a great day. Let's get back to the video. So let's go ahead and talk about the fence a little bit. This fence is. I wanted it seven feet high, but it's more like six and a half feet is what it ended up being which is just fine there is a foot of this fence buried into the ground though so the base of the fence is very very secure the tops with the uh, poles as wide as i did them they're like 10 feet wide so they're probably further than they should have been but they they're holding up just fine i think at some point you know with the mill i might cut some pieces and put some top pieces in at some point if i see i'm having any issues or anything but for right now it's worked out absolutely fine basically just to say hey stay out i was putting this up i had a neighbor come by and i says how's the new fence look and he says it says stay the out <laughs> and i says awesome that's exactly what i wanted it to say when you drove by <laughs> now like i've told you before i live on a dead end road and this is a private easement uh, the city doesn't take care of this road at all. It's a private road for all of us that live on this road. Basically, only the front of the property is that six and a half feet. When I start going up the sides and going into the mountain area, I will not put this big of a fence up there. It'll be a four foot fence with probably some barbed wire on top of that. I'm gonna go up the mountain a ways. I don't know if I'm gonna go past my, my water system or not. But here's a four foot fence, my neighbor has one. Here's a four foot fence with two pieces of barbed wire on the top. And then he's just got these uh, cedar posts that he's used as his tension poles basically. But in between each one, he just has the pound in poles. And that's what I will go ahead and do up the side of the mountain when I do go ahead and do mine. Every so often you can just put another support pole if you would like. Well, good morning again. <laughs> I've jumped on here a bunch of times say good morning, huh? Uh, let's talk about the fence a little bit. Heard in the video that basically the seven foot or six and a half foot is just at the front of my yard. When I start running up the side and fencing off the back of my yard, that's only going to be a four foot fence with some barbed wire on the top. Why am I going to do my whole yard? Um, mainly because I want to get some bigger animals. What I'm going to do, and here's, give me your thoughts on this too. When I got here, it was small animals for me because it's just I'm feeding me. So rabbits and chickens, I thought, could pretty much contain me. And I found that that's just not enough meat for me. I'm going to probably phase out the rabbits and I'm going to go with something bigger. And I'm thinking either goats or sheep. 
One of the things that I still spend money on in the grocery store, obviously, is going to be dairy. Whether it's cheese or milk or yogurt or cottage cheese. Those are basically the four things that I buy when I buy something. So if I go with goats or sheep, I could always... I could if I have time. And that's what I don't know. I mean, you guys probably know better than me, but... I could go ahead and milk the goats. You can get some milk out of it. So I could get some goat's milk. I could do some fermented cheese and stuff out of that goat's milk. So that would help with that and get another thing off of my grocery list, basically. That's what I'm always thinking of. Whether it's goats or sheep, it could probably be the same. I've never eaten either. Well, I've had lamb and stuff at, at, at a restaurant and stuff, but I've never really eaten one fresh that way. So I don't know if I would like one more than the other. If you guys have an opinion on that, let me know. Uh, the other thing I don't really know and I haven't researched yet is a goat like a milking cow. Am I, have to gonna, am I gonna have to go out twice a day and milk that thing? Do I even have time to do that? These are things I really gotta think about or do I just wanna raise them for meat? That's mainly what was on my mind, phasing out the rabbits and moving in either goat or sheep. With doing that down here in this one corner of my yard is the, the section I was going to fence off first so I could have a couple bigger animals. I'm gonna to have to do some kind of a shed to house some food for them and everything. So it's kind of a big project. It's probably not gonna happen in the next year, but definitely thinking about it already and in the future sometime. And that's truly how I evaluate things around here. I, I think about them for quite a while before I ever try to even do it. Uh, I want to get as I want to get as much confidence in my mind going forward, or, or at least a great idea, so I'm not all over the place when I when I focus and do something. Give me your thoughts and ideas. Um, the rabbits are good food. I just don't like to take the rabbits. They're not as easy to take as the chickens are and I don't know how something big is probably not going to be any easier to take but I only got to take one and I don't have to take eight of them <laughs> those are kind of some of my thoughts and ideas so give me give me your thoughts and, and feelings about stuff like that because um, I truly don't know I mean this is this is here again this is a new step for me to go out on to bigger animals is it a responsibility I want is it a responsibility I have more time for you know, those are the things I really have to evaluate to myself before I make some of these decisions. So help me out on that. But the fence, as far as that goes, it's going to be a four foot fence around the property with some barbed wire on the top. I'll probably fence in about three acres. I might fence in a little bit more. It really depends on how far up the hill I want to go and if I want to put a gate up above my water system or if I want to stay below it and have the gate. Um, I don't really need a gate up there. Nobody's behind me. That's just open forest, basically. So I don't really have to worry about that area. Um, but to fence my yard in, if I want to keep my goats in here, uh, you know, if I want to let them out of the pen, per se, and free range, I don't know that I'll do that with the goats. I think they can be even more destructive than the chickens. <laughs> and, and the chickens are pretty destructive. You think about it. With me having free-range chickens here, obviously I can't plant anything I want in the yard. The chickens ruin it. They, they, have, they eat anything. Now, I've found some things that they don't eat, and I'm going to be planting some herbs and stuff up here that they don't. They don't like mint. Uh, they won't eat rosemary. Um, your thyme, um, you know, they might pick at it a little bit, but they're not going to sit there and eat the whole plant. Oregano, sage... Uh, all that stuff I can probably plant here and as long as I cover it when it's really small until it gets uh, some size to it, uh, then, then I can take the covers off or the, or the cages or whatever I put on them and then, then the chickens can pick on them every once in a while but at least all my herbs can be right here and I know that the chickens don't really bother those. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff I didn't think they bother but they destroy just about everything. So, <laughs> and, I, and I have a feeling that goats or sheep, if I free range or let them out of the pen down here, that they're gonna be destroying things too. So that's another thing you gotta think of about your yard. I can't make it as inviting or as pretty, if you wanna say, because I really can't play, uh, plant shrubs and flowers around here and make it look nice because I, because I free range my chickens. Now you can, I can stop free ranging my chickens and I can have a nicer yard. 
the nicer yard, the, the trade-off isn't isn't that great to me. I'd much rather have happy chickens than a happy yard, I guess, in some ways. I, I already have a happy yard, I feel. It just isn't beautified <laughs> um, because of the chickens. So things to think about. Um, I just kind of wanted to let you know where I was going with that fence and what my thoughts and ideas are going in the future. And if you have any thoughts or ideas for me, um, please let me know because here again, this was all new to me and I'm going to have to do it as I go. <laughs> Like always. <laughs> anyway, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. As always, you get out there and make it a good day. I love you guys. I'll talk to you again soon. I think I'm glad I put oil on the kitchen. <laughs> it is just coming down like mad. It is the rainy season. <laughs>